Everyone eats the equivalent of three extra cheeseburgers a day than they admit, regardless of their waistline. So regardless if you're fat, if you're thin, whatever it is, everyone's f***ing lying. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoredates.com. Today we're gonna be talking about how everybody eats three extra cheeseburgers a day than they admit. So you thought, that you've been telling the truth about your diet and little did you know you were fucking lying this entire time and you've been sho <laughs> shoveling down cheeseburgers without even realizing it, bro. Like your alter ego literally takes over and you slam down a couple Big Macs a day is the title of this science news publication. <laughs> it is uh, the story summary. Everyone eats the equivalent of three extra cheeseburgers a day than they admit, regardless of their waistline. So regardless if you're fat, if you're thin, whatever it is, everyone's fucking lying. Researchers have revealed. The study shows obese and thin people all fib about food to the same amount, regardless of the number on the bathroom scale, and this could be undermining national health advice. So again, this isn't actually about your shoveling down cheeseburgers without telling us, but what you are doing apparently is eating the equivalent of three extra McDonald's cheeseburgers a day in calorie amount, regardless if you're obese, if you're you know fit, whatever it is, everyone does it apparently. So this is the study in question. It is obese individuals do not underreport dietary intake to a greater extent than non-obese individuals when data are allometrically scaled. The aim of the study was to assess the extent of misreporting in obese and non-obese adults on an absolute ratio scaled and allometrically scaled basis. So, you know, in general. Everyone is aware of the law of thermodynamics and how you will not lose weight unless you are in literally eating less than you are expending on a daily basis. And how would you gain weight to begin with? It is eating more than you expended on a daily basis. And this is cumulative, you know, over time, if you had a good day, well, that might be weight loss on that day to whatever extent of a deficit you're in. But over time, this compounding effect is ultimately what leads to individuals on average gaining weight and becoming obese or individuals just being slightly overweight or staying the same or losing weight consistently or staying shredded or whatever it is, this is the ultimate overarching thing that determines how anyone ends up body composition wise. Now, obviously there are you know, more factors than that determining you know, what the quality of weight gain is or the quality of weight loss when it comes to lean tissue accrual versus lean tissue loss, you know, how much is gonna be fat, gained versus fat loss proportionally, insulin sensitivity, all of these different things are obviously relevant, but ultimately at the end of the day, you know, it's calories in, calories out. In this study, you would assume that obese people are individuals who just lie way more than, you know, their fit counterparts and are underreporting their calorie intake. But what they found in this study was that that was not the case and everyone underreports just the same. Interestingly enough, so when you go down um, I encourage you to read through this whole thing, by the way, I'm just going to kind of sum it up. So this video doesn't end up being like 20 plus minutes. This study used a novel approach to assess the extent of misreporting and self reported dietary intake in individuals participating in a DLW subset of the NDNS year six to seven on an absolute ratio scaled allometrically scaled basis. We identified significant underreporting of up to 43% in absolute energy intake, presumably. Concurrent with previous literature looking at absolute underreporting, we identified significantly greater underreporting in individuals with an obese BMI in more active individuals and in younger individuals. These were all categories with higher total energy expenditure. There were no significant differences in underreporting between males and females. After ratio scaling total energy expenditure and energy intake, we identified significantly greater underreporting for more active and younger individuals with reduced effect sizes. Magnitude of underreporting for obese individuals approached significance and had a small effect size. After allometric scaling, we identified significant effects of sex, age, and PAL, but the effect of obesity on underreporting was removed. On average, obese individuals underreported energy intake by 42% of total energy expenditure compared to underreporting of 31% in non obese individuals. More active individuals underreported by 41% of total energy expenditure compared to 31% underreporting in less active individuals. So this was almost 1300 calories per day, per day, 820 calories per day, 1307 calories per day, 803 calories per day. 
Very significant. These variables are comparable to previous studies which have reported that self-reported energy intake from food records is 11 to 41% less that total energy expenditure measured via DLW in a variety of populations. Various explanations for underreporting have been examined, including reduced reporting of socially undesirable foods, for example, highly processed and or high fat, high sugar foods, alteration of self reports to project healthier behaviors, memory lapses, misrepresentation of portion sizes, high eating frequencies and actual changes in feeding behavior when individuals are asked to record their food intake. Authors have not generally considered that reporting errors associated with absolute values might be influenced by the magnitude of values as highlighted in this study. Down to the conclusion. In conclusion, our novel approach of allometrically scaling total energy expenditure and energy intake to remove the effects of body mass showed that in weight-stable adults, obese individuals do not underreport dietary intake to a greater extent than non-obese individuals. This contradicts previous research that has reported obesity is associated with a greater degree of underreporting. The high absolute errors in self-reported energy intake and the effects of total of body mass on total energy expenditure and energy intake raises questions as to the use, usefulness of written dietary records. Future research should investigate factors that drive a high energy intake rather than factors that affect underreporting, given the large disparity between actual and self-reported energy intake. So again, even when it comes to these obese individuals, you actually find in this data that they expend more energy on a daily basis because it is more body mass to fuel. They are individuals who apparently, according to this, are expending upwards of 400 extra calories per day just to function. So they're not necessarily like, I don't know, lying more than the active and you know non-obese people. They're not necessarily burning less calories. They're actually burning more calories. They're just eating more in totality and it is affecting their results ultimately, but it's just wild that they are in the degree of underreporting being equated, but it is not representative of total energy intake still at the end of the day. These are individuals who have overeaten. It's just the degree to which they think they've overeaten is not, it's as significant of a disparity between where they actually think they are and where they actually are. But presumably the calorie intake is actually higher in the obese individuals because they still have to eat so much more to account for this disparity in being obese at the end of the day. So this was a good breakdown in me. Like the, I like the clickbait title. It got me, you know, to what to read. Um, and uh, shout out to uh, James O'Hara from uh, Merrick Health. He actually is the one who posted this on his uh, Instagram and made me aware of its existence. Like ultimate clickbait title right here. Although the gap in reported, no, let's start up here. Researchers innovatively took into account the amount of energy a person burns in a day with everyone misreporting how many calories they consume by an average of 900. So 900 calories is quite a fuckload. Like that is, again, I was even shocked when it said three cheeseburgers. I was like, that seems like, like, what is that? Like thousand, like 1500 calories or something, or, you know, 1300, 1200. Apparently McDonald's <laughs> cheeseburgers aren't as calorie dense as I thought, because that's only apparently about 900 calories for three cheeseburgers. But anyways, it found that obese people burn more energy doing day-to-day -day tasks. They do not lie about food more than slimmer people. Although the gap in reported meals and actual intake was bigger in obese people. And by the way, actually, I might have uh, misspoke. I don't actually know that they're burning more via activity. They're just burning more when they do just like normal functions on a day-to-day -day basis because they have more body mass to support. So they have like a greater, you know, they're in a more poised position for fat loss. Technically, if you discount the, again, their satiety signaling, their brain chemistry is probably not as adapted to being satiated at the end of the day. They have more dopaminergic drive to eat shitty. They are less uh, motivated to exercise, presumably, um, feel worse about themselves, self-esteem, blah, 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 whatever it is. There is something accounting for it, but it's interesting how it's not necessarily just like, you know, they're miscounting their shit more than the healthy individuals. Like everyone is miscounting apparently. Now I'm not saying this is the end all be all and they acknowledge the limitations in the study in this actual breakdown. I'm not saying it's factual, it's just interesting nonetheless. Although the gap in reported meals and actual intake was bigger in obese people, they actually burned more calories than non-obese people. Okay, so they actually underreported a bit more, but the ratio after scaling it out was because they're burning more calories, it was essentially the same, seemingly. This casts doubt on the official guidelines that claim Britain's bulging waistlines are due to obese people not telling the truth about their diet. 
and comes amid controversy sparked by the government backtracking on a proposed ban on buy one, get one free junk food deals in a 9 p.m. watershed for sugary snacks. The researchers hope the findings published in the American Journal of Human Biology will shake up guidelines on energy intake. The research team said the gap between reported intake and actual expenditure was bigger in obese adults than normal weight adults, but not because they lied about how much they had eaten. Instead, it was because they expended much more energy each day than their thinner peers. Bigger bodies need more energy every hour of the day and particularly during physical activity because moving your weight is hard work. We use an innovative mathematical model to correct for the difference in body size between obese and non-obese adults. We took into account, when we took into account the different body size and the different energy needs they have, there was no difference in how much they underreported their food intake. The idea that obese people lie about their food intake is wrong. It's simply that as energy requirements increase with a larger body size, there's more error between what people report and what people and what they actually eat. Study looked at, at 221 adults with an average age of 54 in a range of body shapes. Researchers asked them to keep a food diary. They checked how much energy they consumed by using radioactive water and testing the urine of participants. Obese individuals misreported how much they ate by an average of 1,200 calories. So four cheeseburgers and slimmer participants by 800, but they actually burnt 13% or 400 calories more energy. So the equivalent of like 1.13 cheeseburgers, bro. Everyone lied, whether they were obese or non-obese, about how much they consumed by the same amount, claiming they consumed 1,800 calories on average. See, that's wild to me, how individuals would, on average, believe they ate so little. Like, that's so... This is a, like, starvation level of food for me, personally. Like, I would... I'm shocked. Like, again, I guess I track this stuff more meticulously than the average person, so I could understand why maybe somebody might come to that conclusion, but it's just... That seems really low. I don't know. As a result of the study, Professor Sandra Cock, <laughs> that's a name, is calling on the government to overhaul its advice. He said, public health recommendations have, this reminds me, there's a guy for like the Anti-Doping Association. His name is Ruthless, bro. Dick Pound. First name Dick, last name Pound. Yes. Imagine growing up with that. Public health recommendations have historically relied heavily on self-reported energy intake values, recognizing that the measures of energy intake are incorrect might result in the setting of more realistic targets. Additionally, changing the narrative around obese people fibbing about their energy intake might change the focus to investigating dietary risk factors for obesity, such as foods with high energy density, processed foods, high fat, low fiber foods, and sugary beverages, all of which drive a high energy intake. 900 calories equated in numbers, three McDonald's cheeseburgers, five pints of lager, seven packets of ready salted crisps, 18 apples, 300 cherry tomatoes. Jesus, that is a interesting comparison. 18 fucking apples, bro. That's a lot. Jesus, had no idea. So, you know, interesting nonetheless, it is something that uh, if true, you know, individuals are all basically underreporting, but somehow the fit individuals just do so much activity and or just the amount they eat, they're satiated by, that they end up staying in good, healthy shape. Whereas the obese individuals, presumably they're, you know, satiety signaling is really fucked up and they are not, uh, I don't know, not doing as much activity overall, or they are also not building the lean muscle mass and becoming as insulin sensitive as possible and make poor choices. You know, obviously at the end of the day, like it boils down to calories in, calories out. So obese individuals at some point were eating more than they were expending and it resulted in them getting to the point they're at. But interesting nonetheless that uh, like it circles back to that Charlie uh, Rocket story. You know, everyone thinks he's just lying about his diet. And this does not discount that. He is definitely underreporting to a very significant degree because he thinks he is eating, you know, 2,100 calories or whatever, thinks he's in a 600 deficit on some days, a thousand deficits. When in reality, he's been main, actually gaining weight this last six months dieting, despite the fact that he is, you know, his resting metabolic rate with doing fucking nothing was like 2,134 when it was actually assessed via, I forget actually what the method that was used, but when you factor in energy expenditure on top of that, it's likely that he's pushing, I don't know, 2,700, 3,000, 3,300 calories a day of expenditure probably. So the guy's underreporting by, you know, close to what is represented in this study here. So maybe this is more, I don't know, common than you would think, especially in obese individuals. It's in interesting how they are underreporting by like a fucking thousand, dude. Like that's nuts. So anyways, like this just reinforces the importance of meticulous tracking, like down to the fucking gram, food scales, 
measuring the amount of oil on your food, all this stuff adds up and it ends up, you know, with individuals severely underreporting to a point that they're off by goddamn three cheeseburgers. Crazy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplaysmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplaysmoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, not BitChute. Fucking squeaked in there by accident. If you want to support me, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My preventative medicine and hormone replacement therapy platform. My new tropic and pre-workout formulas, Gorilla Mind, as well as Gorilla Mode. Pre-workout formulas and design myself. And anything else I'm associated with, recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance whilst being mindful of micronutrient intake, clothing company that sponsors me. Anything I'm associated with, it's all down there. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.